Hello, people watching car reviews on the internet. Welcome to this, the all new 2024 Alfa Romeo Tonali Ti. This plug-in hybrid is the first plug-in hybrid vehicle I've ever reviewed on this channel. So today I'm gonna get it up in the air. We're gonna nerd out on the tech specs, see how it is constructed, and then go give it the Italian word for beans. Beans. I don't know. Sorry, I don't speak Italian. <laughs> All right. Shapes. Shapes. Wow, Italian cars are so sexy. First up, all models of the Tonali in the US market are all wheel drive, Q4. You don't buy one of these because you're gonna tow a horse trailer, but in theory, this will tow 2,000 pounds with like a rope wrapped around the windshield wiper, I don't know. Because it's an Alfa Romeo, the muffler is triangle shaped. I totally just made that up. Housed in its rear subframe is a 90 kilowatt electric motor for the rear wheel propulsion. It's housed in an all steel construction rear subframe. Why do you say press? This is press here too, but little ones. It utilizes a three arm McPherson strut style rear suspension, all tubular too. Cast iron knuckle. And those McPherson struts are a set of frequency selective dampers by Kony. You can also equip this with an optional set of Morelli dual stage adaptive dampers. And uh, the rear anti-sway bar on this thing measures in at 20 millimeter in diameter. How oh, cute, it's got a strap in case the rubber breaks. Ah, it appears to be an electric pump for the cooling system for the rear electric motor behind the back bumper. Whoa. The Tonali is built on Stellantis' SCCS platform shared with the all-new Dodge Hornet. It is only available as a plug-in hybrid here in North America and it houses a 15.5 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery pack that weighs 276 pounds, making this TI model weigh in at 4,133 pounds. However, because the Q4 system utilizes a rear electric motor for its all-wheel drive, it doesn't have to have a drive shaft and it also has a near perfect 50-50 weight distribution. The exhaust routing on this thing is kind of neat. It goes down the side. It's all stainless steel. There is only one transmission available with the Tonali in the US and that is the Eisen F21-250 six speed automatic. As far as the rear electric motors, I can't do air quotes with a foam finger. So just think that it did that. It utilizes a single speed reduction gear. And to all my mechanics out there watching, this is really gonna irritate you. This is a plastic access panel with four pop clips, one on each corner that you have to remove to put this thing on a lift. Disregarding the rear electric motor, up here everything is configured like a traditional front wheel drive vehicle. Up front you have a McPherson strut style suspension attached to a all steel subframe. Again, paired to a set of those Kony dampers. And even though you can't see it, it has a self-sensing electronic front locking differential. Front anti-sway bar measures in at, ooh, 25 millimeter in diameter. All right, time for the braking test. No one behind me. Ready? Okay. Hmm. You can tell it's heavy, but it still had a, a fairly short stopping distance. Really, that was good. That was good. That was better than I thought it was going to do for its weight. You can still tell it's heavy though, if that makes sense. That braking was just accomplished thanks to a low-key big brake kit because you get the same calipers as the top Velose model, except they're not painted. It is a four piston with a 345 millimeter or 13.5 inch rotor. The wheels, these are the optional 19 by eight plus 37 millimeter offset wheels. And fun fact, regardless of what diameter wheel option you get, they're all the same design because Alpha says this is the correct design for their vehicles. Uh, everything that Alpha makes is pretty. 
And they're wrapped in a set of 235, 45, 19 inch Falcon Zeke's all season tires. This thing's not going off road though. It's only got 5.6 inches of ground clearance. Out back you get a single piston floating caliper with a 305 millimeter or 12.1 inch rotor and the wheel and tire, same size as you get up front. In the name of science, it is now time to give this thing the beans. Bolstering assessment, okay they're cloth so it kind of grips you a little bit and these seats are fantastic they're just they feel really high end and durable the cloth is super super thick on it they're also heat dilated as well as a steering wheel not that that's very necessary right now the headrests say alfa romeo on them stitched plastic fabric tan stitching but black stitching to tie in the center fabric portion of the seats, high fashion. As far as drive modes go, there is the DNA knob in the center. I can go from A, advanced, normal, and then when you turn on the D, you can hear the engine start up. It's also a dual mode because it gives you both electric and gasoline propulsion at the same time. So it's max beanage. You can also slap this over into manual mode, but there's no paddle shifters. Instead, you have to use it like a sequential. Now this one does not have the optional Morelli sourced dual stage dampers. There would be a button in the center of that dial if it did have those, but instead it has the Kony dampers. I can also press this right here and change the gauge cluster into a giant navigation screen or put up various different menus for performance or fuel efficiency, driver assists. I can also hold it one more time and change the menu system on the side to view different options as well. I also have a button in the center that says e-save. That is to save your electric energy in the battery self-explanatory but you can also configure it if you want it just to save that energy or use the gasoline engine and regenerative braking and robot magnet sex to make more electricity in case you're bad at parking it has robot assistance to help you you can also further rotate that dial past the d where you typically find race in the quadrifolio models and that will defeat your esc and your traction control so let's see what this thing can do ready Ooh, let's see me build up boost. It actually spun the tires. This thing's quicker than I thought it was going to be. This thing's, what? This thing's quick. I, this is the first time I've actually really given it the beans. I've been focused on trying to save energy, but this is not bad. Hood pop. It has a little cutout for the emblem. That's adorable. That's a light hood with hood struts. Simple, simple engine bay. All right. Underneath the hood of the 2024 Alfa Romeo Tonale. I said that pretty well, didn't I? I have to toot my own horn for that rolling of the R. And also be careful with the word Tonale. It's not the stuff in a lobster's head, nor is it the thing on your foot. Anyway, you have two electric motors. The front electric motor on its own is capable of producing 44 horsepower and 37 pound-feet of torque. The rear electric motor is capable of producing 121 horsepower and 184 pound-feet of torque. Keep in mind this is all available at zero RPM. Those are both paired with a 1.3 liter multi-air 3 turbocharged four-cylinder that on its own produces 180 horsepower and 199 pound-feet of torque. However, the entire system combined gives you a total output of 285 horsepower and 347 pound-feet of torque. Spicy. Are you easily removable, sir? Yep, I think so. What an interesting looking air box. The new 1.3 liter utilizes a mono scroll turbo, but if you notice the exhaust manifold is cast directly into the head. There is your belt driven front electric motor. It's not really a lot to see under there, so I'm gonna just put this back. Digging in a little bit deeper on this fairly new 1.3 liter turbo multi-air engine, it has a 70 by 86 and a half millimeter bore and stroke with a 10.5 to one compression ratio. It is dual overhead cam, 16 valve, four valves per cylinder, and the multi-air system utilizes oil pressure as well as computer controlled solenoids to determine your valve lift and duration individually per cylinder. Brake master cylinder is kind of tucked in under the wiper cowl. This is equipped with IBS. Not to be confused with what happened 
happens when you eat too much gas station sushi, but integrated braking system. It has brake by wire. Overall, ease of maintenance wise, the engine bay is not super cramped. It was a little tight getting to the back half of the engine, but it doesn't look like this would be very hard of an engine bay to work in. One slight downfall is this is direct injection only, doesn't have port injection to clean the back of the valves, but I've had a direct inject turbocharged vehicle for nine years now, and it hasn't blown up yet, so. Beans. You can actually hear the little zip of the electric propulsion too, combined with the four cylinder. It's not a bad sounding engine. I like that there's no fake sound generation. It's just, you don't hear much of it. And Fiat Alfa Romeo makes a pretty good sounding turbocharged four cylinder. So I think this would sound good uncorked. Handling wise, keep in mind this thing is a crossover. I would like to see this thing slammed. I wonder if it would look good. I don't know, it's got the two-tone body, so maybe, who knows. Not bad, not bad. You can feel a little bit of the heft of the vehicle when it gets unsettled going over little dips in the road. What I did notice at slower speeds handling wise though, is you can feel the distinct disconnect between the front drivetrain and the real, rear drivetrain on slow speed corners. It's fun feeling though. It's, it's not understeer, it's not oversteer, it's weird steer. It's a sensation that you only get with this type of drivetrain configuration where it just feels like there's two things going on at once in a good way, in a fun, unique character type of way. I like the fact that there's still another suspension optional package above this one that would handle even better. Of course, I can't really push this thing to its limits. I'm not on a racetrack, but good torque shove from the combination of the drivetrain when you roll into the throttle. This isn't the highest revving four cylinder. I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that this is a plug-in hybrid also and the multi-air setup. Uh, on the gauge, it shows just below 6,000 RPM. I'm suspecting that fuel cut is a little bit higher than that. When you let off the throttle, you can hear this little electric hum from the regeneration of electricity. I don't know if that's actually piped in noise because it's super subtle. And I think if they were gonna simulate that, they would make it a lot louder than it is. There's no rattles or squeaks or creaks or noises when you're driving down the road in this thing. And the road noise, considering the asphalt has been chip sealed already, it's not too bad in here. <laughs> the noises this thing makes is neat. It just, it sounds more futuristic than the fake noises piped into electric cars because this sounds real. It sounds like a real gas engine in a real spaceship in the back going Good thing about uh, electric mode is I can sneak up on animals. I don't think I'm actually sneaking up, but. There's horses. Hi horses. Hello. They could not give a shit about me right now. What I like about this is on the outside, it looks exotic. And for the average person, they'll probably think this costs twice as much as it really does. But I mean, this thing starts under 40 grand. And the materials back here, while they're not high-end in luxury, they feel robust and the armrest is padded. The seat cushion, it's firm. The back is soft. I don't think it reclines though. The interior also has a built-in feature to remind you to buy lotion for your ashy ass elbows. Is this a recline? Nope, that's a squish Sarah. Oh, neat. Oh, it's a pass-through for some large bread. That's satisfying to look at. The rear vents right here, there's one for each passenger. Got a USB-C and a USB other alphabet letter. It's got a black headliner and the hole in the roof has a translucent shade over it. I love diversity in the automotive market. We need more European brands to bring products over here. Peugeot, Citroen, Renault, come. Power lift gate. So you got the charge cable for the plug-in hybrid system and it's fairly useful back here. You can fold the seats down if you need more room. Oh, that's actually quite a bit of storage down inside there. It's almost like suede. It's very soft lining. Some speakers built into the D-pillar. Dual purpose license plate lights. That's smart. Going down. And it's got a rear wiper. I just noticed that has the Italian flag in the mirror. That's so cute. The dash trim at night actually glows red. It just looks like it's brushed aluminum during daytime, but it's actually a light. 
the entire thing. And for those of you that are wondering, it's chock full of all kinds of modern safety features. Is that metal? It is. I was pleasantly surprised by the sound system. It's nice and crisp and clear and has good bass. Fairly accurate picture for the hatch button. Upfitter switches for the climate control. Wireless charge cubby. Over the week that I've been driving this thing, commuting to and from my shop, I have driven 90% of the commute in all electric mode. Now on a level two charge, this thing will replenish the battery from empty in two and a half hours on just a regular 110 wall outlet in 12 hours. And on a full charge, it'll show in the gauge cluster that you have 31 miles of full electric range. However, I have driven almost entirely to my shop and had it still say 31 miles the entire distance and not deplete any of that. So I have a feeling that you can get a little bit more than 31 miles of all electric range. Now switching it over into the dynamic mode because I was using the gasoline engine a lot more, it will start to drink down that fuel. And if you were to drive this thing in all gasoline mode, if you depleted all your electricity, it still achieves fairly decent fuel economy. So if you look at the power flow gauge, right now it's operating as a rear wheel drive vehicle with the rear electric motor providing the propulsion. The gasoline engine is not on. If I turn on the e-save mode, the gasoline engine kicks on and now it's acting as a front wheel drive vehicle only. And the gasoline engine is also charging up that battery pack some. And if I give it the beans a bit, now it's acting as an all wheel drive vehicle with dual power sources. And the fact that it's essentially a gasoline powered front wheel drive car and an electric powered rear wheel drive car, you have two independent systems from one another. It's just, mechanically, it's brilliant. Now, yes, there is the option that you could just save some money and buy the Dodge Hornet version of this. And that's the same as just going to Tucson for Mexican food and deciding to get Taco Bell. <laughs> now, all jokes aside, I like the fact that they offer a different powertrain in the Hornet. And if you don't really care about the plug-in hybrid feature, then by all means, you can get the two liter turbo version of that. And the fact that they're bringing back the GLH nameplate for the Dodge version, which is something they had in the 80s, it stands for goes like hell, I thought was kind of cute. If I tried to pick this thing apart and find faults with it, I feel like I'd being a snobby automotive journalist, I really can't find anything that I despised about it. This car is perfect for someone that's not sold on the idea of buying a true dedicated electric vehicle, but does like the idea of some electrification. Perfect right here, best of both worlds. It's now time to give this thing some scores, starting with the bean score, the assessment of the feeling you get in your gut when you give it the beans. And the 2024 Alfa Romeo Tonali Ti gets a rating of... Next is the cookie score, the assessment of value, and this thing as equipped at just over $50,000 gets a rating of... To be fair, to be fair, <laughs> the options that were added to this aren't really necessary and the TI starting at just over 44 grand in itself is great value. Next is the wrench score, the assessment of ease of maintenance and this plug-in hybrid gets a rating of <laughs> followed by the squid score, the assessment of handling and this is getting a rating of <laughs> lastly is the penguin score, the assessment on how much I personally like a vehicle and the Tenali gets a rating of I like this way more than I thought it was going to. I was just like, well, this can be another appliance vehicle, another crossover on the market, but it completely changed my mind, not just on this vehicle, but also on plug-in hybrids. This is the way to go. If you want electrification, I'm gonna say right here, I would take this over pure EV or over a regular hybrid, and I definitely enjoyed the week that I spent in it. So thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you soon with another. Bye.